Well, hi there. Welcome back to Travels with Jordy. Uh, last week I gave away a few shirts and I thought that was really fun. In fact, uh, I gave away five, I think, to, you know, you had to find Jordy. Uh, there was an overwhelming response for the shirt. So what I'm going to do is give away a shirt every week. And uh, no mas, no fuss. You don't have to do anything. Just, well, you do. You have to comment. Just make a comment in the video. Anything, say anything like, hi, Peter. And I'll go through all the comments in the first 24 hours to make it fair. And pick out of a hat a name and you'll get a shirt. So I'll do that in perpetuity. A shirt a week. What the heck? Until I change my mind. Anyway. So if you're new to the channel and you don't know what the heck I'm talking about, my name is Peter. And I live aboard that old wooden boat. It's a 1953 Monk cruiser built in British Columbia. And I'm in Victoria, British Columbia, restoring it while I live aboard. Planning on major, major international cruising someday. So stick around, see what we're up to. And if you like this sort of thing, please subscribe. <laughs> Want to start scraping. Um, this was actually the first piece I ever opened up. Um, took the uh, vinyl wallpaper off and uh, sanded a little bit. And there's a lot of water damage here. It's kind of a shame because this is right at the bedroom. My head is going to be right here lying in bed. So it'd be nice if this was relatively nice. It's, but it's not going to be. Um, I'm grateful this window opens, but it's a basically it's an RV window. Anyway. Let's just get pulling it apart. Oddly enough, I can't just pull this vinyl off all that easily. See that dirty line there? It's actually behind the trim. They put this stuff on before they put this trim on. And uh, I just, it's just, oh, it's just so gross. Oh. Well, anyway, it's easy enough to fix. Uh. Okay, okay, come on. Let's go. It's not that I can't say it's going well. It's going well. It really is. Uh, it's just amazing. And I guess anyone who's worked on old wooden boats or any old thing, you discover so many previous sins. The stuff people have done. Just filling. This was a quarter inch thick body, white body filler through here. The last of it's just in that gap there. Because they wanted it nice and flat for the vinyl wallpaper to go on. And uh, I don't know. It's just... It's just gross, and I'm so glad when I get rid of grossness. That's why this leaking window is really driving me nuts. But anyway, we'll move on, and uh, in a little bit, this will be done. Yeah, and that'll be good. Hmm. Okay, so let's get back up to date here. I haven't shot much video in the last little while. Um, got all the V-joint on the aft bulkhead. Got it all in against the sides here where it's going to be visible, uh, and against the um, central bulkhead here. What I'm doing now is preparing to uh, refinish the inside of the cabin sides. I've had heater blowing on it. It was over here overnight to dry this out. It's pretty dry now. Now I'm drying it out here. And what I'm doing now is running around with my drill and just touching the tip of the drill against all the little uh, body filler holes, little white body filler holes. I really could do this with a Dremel, but th this is just fine. I've already done about a 50 or so in here. So I'll work my way along and uh, just touch out all that body filler and I'll have to replace it with filler. But of course it'll be sandable, I mean uh, stainable filler. So that when I um, stain this, it'll look a little bit better. All right, I'll keep at it. Dremel, little sanding dremel on the end. Just the perfect thing for in here. Fantastic. Love it. Love it. That would be forever hand sanding. Okay, got a couple other corners to do. This one's a little close. Fantastic. This little um, open joint here, I'm going to have to clean up with a knife, get some glue in there, and clamp that shut. Okay, it's going great. First accent lights in. They're not really very bright, but I really, really like them. What they are is tiny little landscape lights, like step lights, um, LED. Uh, tiny pucks. I wanted something that just shows off the wood. <laughs> it doesn't look all that great right now. Um, and uh, something that would just enough glow. They'll be all the way along both sides of the boat, also in the wheelhouse, as well as regular lighting up above when I really need bright lighting. But I'm really, really pleased with these. They go in this edge strip um, 
of mahogany that I put on to cover the gap between the ceiling panels and the uh, existing cabin sides. I don't know how much of this you're getting, so I'll give you a better view of how I did this in the morning, but I just connected them up and wanted to share them. Okay, well we got a full day of hand sanding here today. Um, that side's almost ready. You can see some dampness in the corner, poor drain last night, and I have a little leak up at the corner. I'm gonna have to deal with that before I can get any stain on here. Uh, likewise, just a little bit over in this corner, because that bloody window is still leaking, I've got to deal with that today too. Maybe, hopefully, just drill some drainage holes in the channels, but we'll find out. Anyway, so lots of sanding. You're seeing all kinds of white filler back on here. Well, that's not the body filler that I dug all out. That's um, a stainable um, regular wood filler, uh, which uh, won't look great, but it won't look bad. It'll at least look like little brown dots instead of little white dots. Um, yeah, so quite a lot to do. Quite a lot of, I don't know if you can see looking at the light here, but some pretty serious damage in here where this wasn't actually cut out right. Uh, it's, it's okay, you know, it's what it is. Get it done, that's, that's all there is to it. I'm really looking forward to getting the other lighting strip on here. I had so much fun doing that last night. I should get that on today. I've got to get the stain on here today. Um, it's Sunday and my daughters come on next Saturday and the bed is right here and they need to be able to sleep without breathing in um, stain evaporating as this has been on here two days and it's still got a little. Now of course I'll get some tongue oil on as well but I can't tongue oil until it's dry. Now this is just about at the point where I could tongue oil it. Um, of course I've got about tons on the shower door because it's a shower. Well, I think really on the whole I'm doing pretty well. If I can just get this sanded and stained and the light strips up today, I'll be moving along pretty well and then we can get going back in the wheelhouse. Uh, the main thing to do in there, of course, is to build some sort of galley. It'll probably be a temporary galley. After that, there's going to be a wood storage issue. Unfortunately, I probably pre-bought a lot of the mahogany quicker than I needed it, but it's when it was available. All right, back to sanding. So much fun. When you're sanding with a mask on, do you ever catch yourself blowing away the sawdust? Oh. Okay, so sanding is finished and the final fine sanding to make sure it's nice and smooth for the stain is done all over. I've got the heater going in that corner and I'll probably give it a few minutes in that corner to dry them out. I've gone outside and taped up the leaks. It was pretty obvious where it was coming in. So, but I want to get it really dry because you dry wood and the moisture in the wood just comes through again. So I got to get to the point where half an hour after I take away the heat, it's still dry. Uh, so that'll take a little while, but I got lots to do. One well, of the first things I want to do is deal with these leaks at these windows. Now, I don't know if you'll be able to see, but I cleaned out the channel and there are one, two, three little drain holes that should drain the channel. Uh, however, they don't go to anything. So I'm just going to drill those out to the outside. If I take you outside for a second, try not to drop you in the water, you'll see that the plastic frame for the window is exposed outside and I can run a drill through so it'll come right to the plastic between the wood and the plastic flange there. And uh, I think that, if it doesn't solve my problem, I don't know what else will. Uh, let me just show you what I've done. I don't know if you can see down there. Um, you can now see right out that hole as well as that one and that one. Perhaps you can, perhaps you can't. Uh, anyway, I've drilled three quarter inch holes in that part of the track. I do believe there was no effective drainage here before, so we'll see. They're, you know, they're not an ideal situation in any event, but I'm grateful for them because they open. And I'm gonna carry on with, as I mentioned, the these edge strips. Um, trim basically that goes along the edge. Uh, the fundamental reason I had to do this is because the cabin is eight feet eight inches wide inside so an eight foot panel is still four inches shy of the uh, this beam at the side of the um, cabin side so I needed a filler of some sort so I wanted to have sort of a combined use. Um, I wanted a piece of wood trim for sure just to tidy up the end of it. I wanted a large enough one that I could have access to a wire chase. 
I don't want to run any wires. I haven't run any wires forward and aft through little holes in the um, deck beams as had been there before. I want all the wires to come in along the edge here and any wires that have to go to the center or crossover will be chased over. I don't ever want to pull this down again, even though it's only temporary. Anyway, the principle of it is working relatively well. It also meant I had a wide enough panel that I could put some tiny puck lights in that you saw, um, which I'm really loving. I'm just crazy about them. And that's just to create like just a warm light in here. It's not obviously working lighting, but it, it's, uh, it's going to be really nice. So the wood I'm going to use is this rather precious um, Sapelli mahogany, that uh, four and a quarter that I've had dressed down to three eighths of inch. This was to be used um, in the cockpit along the combing. Uh, I was going to try and steam bend it. Although I've since discovered that steam bending sapella is almost impossible, so I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do out there. As a result, I'll use it for this and, um, and the immense expense I had having this wood made up will just be absorbed in the immense expense of all uh, things wooden boat. Okay, so <laughs> The other thing I need to do to it, though, is I need to curve it because the side of the boat is curved. The side of the side of the cabin top is curved. As you look down there, it's curved inward. It doesn't seem like much. It's probably only three quarters of an inch over the length of this cabin, uh, but that's way more than I can bend this um, mahogany sideways. Uh, obviously, it would bend very well in this direction. Sorry, I can't really hold it, but you understand what I mean. So as I had to with that one over there, you can see I've got it off so that I could do the sanding. I actually had to curve it. First, I held it in place and scribed it, and then I didn't curve it with a saw. I actually curved it with my power planer because I had a little more control, and I could scribe to the line a little better. That's what I'm going to do again here. Puts a hell of a lot of equity into this wood, I must say, but anyway, it's, uh, it's worth it. So I'm going to hold it up, scribe it, start planing it. I'll show you a few steps as I go along. Cheers. I don't know if you can see a pencil line along there. There's my scribe line all the way along. I've got it uh, sitting in a couple of clamps here, poor man's vice, and the power planer will be my tool of choice to uh, bring this multiple passes. We'll slowly bring that down to the line and I should be able to do a reasonably neat job of it. Um, doing the other side, it becomes a concave curve and that's going to be a little more difficult. You have to set the blade fairly deep because the plane is riding in a hollow. Anyway, I used to have a special plane for that. It was really cool. Anyway, let's uh, see what we can do. I don't want to take off one cut more than I need to here because there's not a lot of uh, ceiling panel exposed back there. Let's put it up. And with the airspace gap at the back, which my finger is simulating, it actually covers all the ceiling panels, which was a near thing, I'll tell you. Okay, so now let's um, drill the holes for the lights. Make sure I put them in the right place because I want them lined up with um, the lights that are opposite. The logic here, <laughs> because I'm going to build a cabinet from here back, there's no sense having a light here or here. Uh, so the first light will start here, skip one here, skip one here, skip one here. Alright, got some oil on here. And we're ready for oil. Gave them all a nice uh, fine sanding and uh, made sure that all the edges were chamfered nicely. And it's gonna look amazing with a little oil on it. Well, time to start staining. Can't hold it off forever. It's gonna be a bit of a big job, especially to keep a wet edge. Um, as with stain, of course, you have to always keep the stain wet. Anyway, I'm not going to uh, talk about staining anymore because I've talked about staining so many times. But anyway, I'm really excited about getting the stain on here finally and uh, this will take me the last of today's light. In fact, it will take me well into today's dark to get this on and then rub down again. But it's going to look awesome tomorrow. I may not see you again tonight. I got to keep moving. See ya.